My name is Kelly. I'm one of the certified trainers here at Chief Architect, and this is our tray ceilings webinar. Uh, in this tray ceiling webinar, we're going to be talking a lot about how to create tray ceilings, how to edit tray ceilings, as well as things that are coming up in the new version of Chief Architect, Chief Architect X13. Uh, joining me here in the webinar are a lot of our Chief Architect staff. So if you do have a question during my presentation, feel free to chat it in using the GoToWebinar control panel there, and our Chief Architect staff will be happy to help you out and assist you with those questions in that uh, capacity if you type them in there. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, so uh, if you need to leave early or if you would like to review it later, once our webinar has uh, concluded over the next couple of days, we'll be sending out an email with a link to the recording, as well as a link to a survey so you can let us know uh, how we're doing and what type of topics you'd like to see in the future. Uh, once I am done with my presentation here, we are going to open up the floor for uh, live questions there. So if you do have a question, there's a raise your hand option there in the go to control panel webinar as well. Uh, and then we'll call on you at that point. We'll get a little into a little bit more of those details about how that works after my presentation is finished here. But for now, let's go ahead and get started. Creating a tray ceiling in Chief Architect is actually pretty simple. We've got some tools that make it very, very easy to simply create a tray ceiling that matches the shape of an existing room. We'll start with our bedroom here. To create a tray ceiling that matches the shape of this room, I'm simply going to select the room. I'm going to click on the Make Tray Ceiling in Room Edit button to bring up the tray ceiling specification dialog. The width value is how far in from the wall is the tray ceiling going to be. The depth value is simply how tall is the tray ceiling going to be. The thing to be aware of with the depth value is that by default, Chief Architect is going to set the top of the tray ceiling to match the ceiling height of the room that it's being built in, and then push down into the room whatever the depth value happens to be. In this case, my ceilings are set to 10 feet high. That means the top of the tray ceiling is going to be set at 10 feet, and then the soffits of the tray ceiling or the sides of the tray ceiling are going to push down into the room 12 inches. I'll leave these values at the default for now and go ahead and click OK. If I take a back clipped cross section through this room, you can see what I was talking about. The top of this tray ceiling is again at 10 feet. The lower parts of the tray ceiling here are at 9 feet, pushing down into the room. Back in plan view, if I want to adjust the shape of the tray ceiling, I can do that. I can simply select on the tray ceiling, and I can use the dimensions to adjust the shape. So I can say I want this to come in 4 feet instead of 2 feet on one side, and I can set this side to also be 4 feet instead of 2 feet. Now if I wanted to do something like chamfer the edges to match the shape, I can come down and click on this chamfer button here, chamfer lines button here. I can click on the set chamfer distance button to set how big of a chamfer I want on these edges here. 12 inches is what I'd like here, so I'll go ahead and click OK. And then I'll click on the chamfer all corners button to chamfer the edges and to create my own custom ceiling shape. There are other tools to adjust the shape of the tray ceiling. If I wanted to click on this and apply breaks or change lines to arcs or things of that nature, I can do that as well. I can also create tray ceilings manually. I can do this using the tray ceiling polyline tool, or I can convert a CAD object to that. If I click in this room over here, you'll notice this isn't the best shape for creating a tray ceiling automatically with these little bump outs here. So what I can do instead is under my roof tools, I can click on the tray ceiling polyline button. I can click and drag and create a tray ceiling polyline to be the shape that I want it to be. And again, if I click on these edges here, I can set them to be the exact size and shape I want them to be. If I want to create a completely custom tray ceiling shape, I can do that using my CAD tools. If I go to my CAD tools and choose my draw line tool, I can draw out a shape. And once I have that shape drawn, I can click on this and come down to my convert polyline tool. I can then choose the tray ceiling option and click OK. And Chief Architect will then give me the option to create a tray ceiling. 
Now that I've created my tray ceilings, I can start modifying them to match my needs. If I zoom back in on the bedroom here, I'm going to select this tray ceiling and I want to add some moldings to it. To do that, I'm going to open it for specification and I'll go to the moldings panel. And on the moldings panel, I can click the add new button to add a new molding here. And I'm going to find one that I like, in this case CM08, I'll select that and then I'll click OK. Now I'm going to want to change this molding a little bit. It's a little small for what I want to do here. I would like it to cover the entire tray and be a nice decorative piece here. So I want to adjust the width and height of this, but I want to adjust them the same because I don't want to distort this value in any way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check this checkbox that says retain aspect ratio, and then I'm going to change the height of this molding to match the height of my tray ceiling or the depth of my tray ceiling, which is 12 inches. And when I do that, the width will automatically adjust to maintain that same aspect ratio with the molding that I had previously. Once I do that, I'll go ahead and click OK. And now if I take a look at this in the camera view here, and as you can see now, we have a nice molding that follows the shape of our tray ceiling. As I mentioned earlier, tray ceilings by default are going to push down into the existing room that you have there. If I want to have it so that the bottom of my tray ceiling matches my ceiling height, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my tray ceiling, again open it up for specification, and I'm going to check the checkbox that says recess into ceiling. What this will do is this will then take the bottom of my tray ceiling, set it at the ceiling height for my room, it will then go take the top of my tray ceiling and push it up 12 inches. The thing to be aware of is this cannot be done if you have a second floor in your plan. If there is a floor above this room, the recess into ceiling option won't work. Once I've got that checked, I'll simply go ahead and click OK. And now if we again take a back clipped cross section looking at this, you'll see that we have our tray ceiling. You'll see that we have the bottom of our tray ceiling at the top of our room height, and then our tray ceiling is now pushing up into the attic cavity. Now if I don't want a vertical tray ceiling, I can have Chief slope it for me. So back in plan view here in the living room area, I'll select the tray ceiling that we manually created earlier, and I'll open that up for specification. And notice we have a pitch option here, and you'll notice the vertical checkbox on the right hand side. That vertical checkbox means the tray ceiling is, is going to go straight up and down and it's going to not have any pitch. So if I uncheck this vertical checkbox, this now gives me an option to set a pitch for this tray ceiling. So if I wanted to set it to 8 and 12, for example, instead of 12 and 12, I could do that. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK. And you'll notice my camera view on the right hand side, I now have a pitch to my tray ceiling. You'll also notice in plan view here, you can see how that tray ceiling is now pitched in and the top of the tray ceiling is in the middle there. Another option you can do with tray ceilings is you can nest tray ceilings. So in our bedroom here, I'm going to select this tray ceiling that we made previously. And you'll notice down on my bottom toolbar, I have an option to make a nested tray ceiling. And this works very similarly to how a tray ceiling works with a room. In the sense that you have the same tray ceiling specifications as far as setting the width, depth, and the pitch, this tray ceiling will also match the shape of the tray ceiling that it's nesting into. So I'm going to go ahead and set the width to 12 inches here and we'll leave the depth at 12 inches. Also notice the recess into ceiling checkbox is grayed out. And that's because the parent tray ceiling, or the one that we're kind of nesting into, is already recessed into the ceiling. If we didn't have the initial tray ceiling recessed into the ceiling, then what would happen here is that the top of this tray ceiling would be at the default room height, and then we would go down the depth of both of those tray ceilings for the bottom of our tray ceiling there. So, but because the, our, our initial tray ceiling is already recessed into the, uh, into the ceiling, then this one will all automatically be there as well. Another thing to note here is on the moldings panel, this is going to inherit the moldings from the parent tray ceiling. So notice here we have the same CM08 that we have on our bedroom tray ceiling below. We also have the same width and height for that. So we'll go ahead and click OK on that. And notice our tray ceiling again matches the shape of our initial tray ceiling. And again, if we look at this in a camera view, 
you'll see that we have our tray ceiling and our moldings going all the way up to the top there. Up until this point, we've been working using the floor plan view shell plan view. I would like to create my own plan view specific for my tray ceilings so I can highlight my tray ceiling information on my construction documents. To do this, I'm going to create a copy of my floor plan view shell because that's very similar to what I want to have my actual plan view look like for my tray ceilings. So to do this, I'm going to come up to my edit plan views control and choose the option that says save active view as. When I click on that, it's going to ask me to name this, so I'm going to call this tray ceiling plan view. Now that I'm in my tray ceiling plan view here at the top, I'm going to click on the edit active view button, and this is going to allow me to make some changes to my plan view. Now specifically what I want to do is I'm going to go to the selected defaults panel, and here I can change any number of these defaults. So I could go and create a custom dimension default for my tray ceilings, a custom text default for my tray ceilings, things of that nature. For the sake of time, we're simply going to go and create a custom layer set for my plan view. So to do that, I'm going to click the define button. And you'll see we have a list of all of the layers in the plan view, and we're currently using the floor plan view shell layer set. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a layer set that's specific for my tray ceilings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a copy of this floor plan shell layer set, and I'm going to call it tray ceilings layer set. And once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK. And now we see that my tray ceiling plan view is using my tray ceiling layer set. Now any changes that I make to my layers is going to apply to just my tray ceiling plan view and not any of my other layer sets. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Next I'm going to open up my active layer display options and this is going to show me the status of my layers in my tray ceiling layer set. So here I can start controlling what I want my layers to look like when I'm using my tray ceiling plan view. For example, I would rather have my tray ceilings not be pink but be black and have them be solid lines. So to do that, I'm going to click on a tray ceiling, and you'll see I have my ceiling planes layer selected, and you'll see I have a color option here. So I'll go ahead and click on this color option, and I'm going to slide this slider all the way to the right to make it black. If you're on a PC, this interface may be a little bit different, but the end result should be that you should have the option to choose a black color to use for that instead. So I'll go ahead and click OK on that. Now I want to change the line style of these layers. And how that's done is with the ceiling planes layer selected here on my active layer display options, down at the bottom I have some properties including my line weights and my line style. I'm going to go ahead and set the line style to be a solid line instead of a dashed line. And now if you look in my plan, you'll notice that I have my tray ceilings that we've made as black solid lines. Now I'm wanting to emphasize my tray ceilings and not emphasize things like my walls or my railings. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off some display layers and change how some of these other layers are displaying. For example, I don't want to see my room divider lines. So I'm going to go ahead and click on one of these room dividers, and I'm going to turn off the layer that that's on, which is walls invisible. I also want to take one of these lines here and change the color of that. I don't want it to be a black color. I want it to be, let's go with a little bit of a gray color. Maybe not purplish, but it's about, about here would be good. So once I've got that, I'll go ahead and click OK. And that's going to lighten those walls up a little bit. I'm also going to go ahead and change them to be a dashed line. Again, to emphasize or make sure that they're not the things that are emphasized in this plan. I'm going to do the same thing here with my railings. So I'll go ahead and select a railing. And I'm going to change their color to be a little bit of a lighter gray as well. And I'll go ahead and click OK on that. And I'm also going to make these the same dashed lines here. So now we still have our lines, but what we're emphasizing here are our tray ceilings. And then if I wanted to go ahead and add some text for these, I could. So if I wanted to, you know, come in here and add some text that says, this is 12 inch deep, add a 12 and 12 pitch. I can add that in here for this particular view here. 
So I can have that information on here for this particular layer set. And then I could take this view and send it to the layout so I can have that information displaying and highlighting the information that I want it to display. There are a couple of things to be aware of with tray ceilings. Looking at this plan view that I have here, you'll notice that I've created a tray ceiling on the right hand side here, and I have an invisible wall that's going through the plan. But you'll notice in my elevation view over on the right that I have my tray ceiling listed here, and then that lowered tray ceiling goes all the way through to the end of the wall here. That's because tray ceilings ignore invisible walls. And what I mean by that is if a, an invisible wall exists in an area, the tray ceiling is still going to create a lowered ceiling throughout the entire area until it connects to a physical wall, not just an invisible wall. And that's why, again, you notice here this tray ceiling goes all the way through past that invisible wall, all the way to the edge. Now, another thing to know about tray ceilings is that they don't interact well with invisible walls. And what I mean by that is if I move this tray ceiling so it connects right to the invisible wall, notice how the left-hand tray here on my cross-section doesn't display. If I look in a camera view, you'll notice I have a gap right where that invisible wall would be. If you ever need a tray ceiling to be close to an invisible wall, there is a way to work around that. And what that is, is as long as the edge of the tray ceiling is more than an, half an inch away from that invisible wall, then it should display correctly. So if I set this to be half of an inch here, notice in my elevation view it displays correctly. If I get that tray ceiling any closer to that invisible wall, that tray ceiling edge won't display and won't generate properly. The same problem exists with stairwells. Notice how in this camera view we can see into the cavity there. That is a technical issue with tray ceilings and unfortunately we don't have a solution yet for that. That is something to be aware of with tray ceilings in the future. Another thing to know about tray ceilings is Chief Architect will tell you when it's having trouble creating that tray ceiling. So in our example here, I'm going to go and create a new tray ceiling. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up for specification, and I'm going to mark it as recessed into ceiling. Now there are two problems with this tray ceiling and why it won't generate a tray ceiling, a recessed tray ceiling, and Chief is going to give me an exclamation mark telling me it's not working. The reason why I'm getting an exclamation mark is because of two different reasons. One we've already discussed. There is a second floor in this area, so Chief Architect can't generate a tray ceiling into a floor platform on a floor above. So that's one problem there. The other problem is that you can't mix tray ceiling types. And what I mean by that is I've got this tray ceiling marked as a recess tray ceiling, but this tray ceiling here on the right, this is not marked as a recess tray ceiling. It's just marked as a standard tray ceiling. You can't have two different tray ceiling types in the same physical space. So the physical space I'm talking about in this particular case is between the four physical walls that are in this space here. So in order to correct that in this particular case, I would open this tray ceiling back up and mark it to not recess into the ceiling, and then it will generate properly for me. Now that we've spent some time going over the tray ceilings in Chief Architect X12 and how they work, let's focus on what's coming next with Chief Architect X13 and tray ceilings. One of the new features we've added to Chief Architect X13 is the ability to add moldings to sloped edges on tray ceilings. In X12, currently, when you go to try and add a molding to a sloped edge, it's going to be grayed out. Here in X13, what I can do is I can add a molding just like it would add any other molding. So I'm going to go ahead and select this tray ceiling, open it up for specification, and again notice this tray ceiling isn't a vertical tray ceiling. It's got a sloped edge. Right now our pitch is set to 8 and 12. Now if I go to the moldings panel, as I said previously in X12, this would be completely grayed out because it's a sloped edge. However, in X13, I can simply go ahead and add a new molding in here. So I'll go under my core catalogs and architectural and moldings, and I'll go to casings, and I'm going to go to casing CS03, this guy right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, and I'll click OK. And notice that Chief Architect automatically rotates this profile so that it fits with my tray ceiling. It fits with my sloped edge here. So from here, what I can do is I can set the width and the height. I'm going to set the width to be six inches wide. And I'm going to set the height 
to be 18 inches tall. Once I've done that, I'm also going to go ahead and set the vertical offset to zero. And I'll go ahead and click OK on that. And now if I look at this in a camera view here, you can see we have our moldings now following along on the sloped edge of our tray ceiling there. One of the other features that's new in Chief Architect X13 is the ability to independently frame your tray ceilings. Now in this particular case, I've gone ahead and marked these two tray ceilings in my living room and dining room areas as recessed tray ceilings, simply so it's easier to see the framing that's going to get generated. So now that I've done that here, I'm going to select on this tray ceiling here. And when I do that, if I come down here to my edit toolbar, you'll notice I have a build framing for selected objects tray ceiling option here. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And this is going to ask me if I want to see framing ceiling joists in my plan view. The answer is no. So I'll go ahead and say no to that. But notice now over here in my framing overview that Chief Architect has built the framing just for that specific tray ceiling there. One of the other features that we've added in Chief Architect X13 is the ability to set custom framing parameters for different tray ceilings. So I'm going to go ahead and select this particular tray ceiling here, and if I open it up for specification, you'll notice I now have an option for framing spacing and rafter width here. So I can go and I can set those to be different based off of the construction needs and engineering needs of my tray ceilings. So for example, if I wanted to set this instead of 24 on center, I want to set this to 16 on center to match my existing roof frame, to match my existing ceiling framing, I can do that. And if I wanted to make these instead of two buys, I wanted to make these four buys. Again, if I'm having some type of extra weight or something like that, I can do that as well. In this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and keep these as two buys instead of four buys or anything like that. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and click OK. Now you'll notice when I do that, that Chief Architect is giving me some triangles here. And these are telling me that there's something to be aware of with this. And if I mouse over this, Chief is going to tell me the framing structure doesn't match between the two of these. This may lead to some unexpected results. In this particular case, that's OK. So I'm going to go ahead and tell Chief to frame this anyway. So I'll click on this particular uh, tray ceiling that I have here, and I'll go ahead and click on my build framing for selected objects. And again, I don't want to see my ceiling joists here, but now I have my tray ceiling built here. Again, that's a different framing style than the framing that's built over here. And that is a quick overview of the new features that are coming for tray ceilings in Chief Architect X13. Alrighty, so I hope everybody got some good information out of that. We are going to go ahead and open up the uh, webinar for questions now. And so how we're going to do that here is we're going to have you guys go ahead and raise your hand in the GoToMeeting control panel here. And then Carrie will call on you. And when she calls on you, she's going to have you unmute yourself. And then you can go ahead and ask your questions. So with that in mind, Carrie, do we have any questions that are up here that we can answer? Thanks, Kelly. We do. We have Stephanie Samuel here. Hi, Stephanie. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi. I didn't know I was the first one up. <laughs> Hi, Stephanie. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, in the rendering you just uh, clicked away from, you had um, the rafters showing. Mm -hmm. um, did you Are those boxed with a certain material? Um, and did I miss that part of the presentation where you show how that's done? No, uh, that's just something I made to particularly make a pretty image. Uh, essentially what that is in this case, I'm going to go over to Chief here for a minute, is uh, those are essentially just soffits that I've okay. gone and drawn in there. And then I have set their bottom height to be the height of this interior uh, recess tray ceiling. And then I changed the material to be a wood material. Okay. All right. Um, and the other question I have, one more question. I know this is, a, this is part of Premiere and I pretty much do um, interiors, kitchens and baths, but I do occasionally will do a tray ceiling. Um, but I don't know if uh, the version I have allows you to show the framing for it. Uh, with the, I believe you not actually okay. with interiors. I don't believe you do have the ability to show the tray ceiling framing there if anybody's got a any of our staff has another uh insight on that but i believe the answer is no i don't think interiors comes with any of the framing uh plan views or things of that nature that's in there okay all right great thank you yep kelly we had quite a few people write in and ask if you could um, describe how you would add lighting around the perimeter of the tray ceiling 
You know what? That's a, a wonderful question that I realized that I kind of missed in my earlier presentation. So let's talk a little bit about that there. So uh, one of the ways that you can add, one of the easiest ways that you can add lighting to a tray ceiling is to use a rope light. And there's actually rope light options built into the tray ceiling here. So if I go to, uh, we'll go, go grab this interior recessed one here, and I'm going to open it up for specification here. And you'll notice right over here, we have our rope lights option. And so what this will do, if I go ahead and choose the rope lights option here, I'll click on add new. This is going to allow me to kind of specify how I want my rope light to work. What's the light size going to be? And what's the distance between the individual light sources inside of that rope light? For now, I'm just going to kind of leave these at the defaults where they're at. And I'll go ahead and click OK on that. And that's going to add that rope light in there. If I go ahead, I'm going to click OK for now and take a camera view looking at that. And we will see here in our camera view. Oh, I got to get rid of my moldings for a moment. Apologies here. Let me open this up and turn off my moldings for a moment. You'll need, now see we have a tray ceiling that is uh, a, a rope light that's essentially running along the entire width of the tray ceiling there. So that's a really good. Um, that's the easiest way to do that. You can also do things where you can go in and manually draw in rope lights using the rope light tool, but that's a, probably the quickest and easiest way to do that is to add, uh, use the rope light controls in the tray ceiling controls there. Great, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. If anyone has any questions, just raise your hand. In the meantime, we had Carl write in and he wanted to know, how can I make an inverse tray ceiling? Um, we call it a bulk, bulkhead. A bulkhead, okay. So bulkheads, you can just use soffits for that. So if you're doing something where you're having an inverse tray ceiling, let's say kind of maybe in this area over here in my design, if I look at that here for a minute, um, maybe I wanna have like, you know, an island that's got maybe a little bit of a bulkhead sitting above it there. Easiest way that I would do for something like that is to grab something like the soffit tool. And when I place the soffit, it's first gonna initially put it underneath the tray uh, underneath the bottom of the ceiling planes there. But then what I can do is I can click on that soffit that I've made here and I can kind of basically resize it and stretch it out to be whatever size I need it to be there. And then you'll have that right there in, uh, in your ceiling there. Now, uh, the thing to be aware of with that is that this is, if it's gonna be need to be more of a custom shape or any type of a pitching or anything of that nature, then you're gonna be looking at more things like polyline solids and that kind of stuff. But if it's just a simple and easy uh, box like this, then something like a soffit is gonna be probably your best bet. And you can open this soffit up for specification here. And you can change, for example, you can change the, the height of it there. So if I didn't want to be 24 inches, if I want it maybe to be uh, 18 inches or something like that, I can lower that and make sure that that is at the proper 121 height there and click OK. And that'll move that up into my ceiling there. All right, great. Our next question comes from Jack Phelan. Hi, Jack. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, Jack. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Awesome. Um, I was a little bit late, but I, I don't know if we talked about um, reflected ceiling plans at all. Um, so sometimes, uh, you know, the tray ceiling will be worked in um, with that, depending on how busy it gets there. Um, mm -hmm. But I was curious, um, you know, when I'm doing the reflected ceiling plans, um, I was having an issue and I guess it actually applies to, to more than that, but um, with the dimension line, um, the center line in particular. So it's just related to this, maybe not specifically what we're covering at the moment, but um, sure. when, I, when I rotate, um, essentially when I send the plan view to, uh, like the floor plan view to the layout, um, uh -huh. you know, the, um, the center line uh, symbol will rotate, you know, with the plan. Um, so that it's you know it's always upright um but mm -hmm. i'm having an issue with the top however i rotate the plan whatever the like the top um lines are that center line um is always like on the actual center line so that cl like mm -hmm. ends up being kind of like over top of that line but all three of the other lines like on the other three sides are fine um, I wasn't able to find a way that I was able to adjust the um, like an offset or something for that, that mm -hmm. center line part. Um, and I also didn't want to apply it to all of the center lines. So I didn't I definitely didn't see a way to like open up that line individually um, and change it. So I don't know if there's a solution for that or why. So I'd you're talking about you're talking about this CL that's kind of right down here. 
Yeah, exactly. So, um, so yeah, if you had like around all four sides, you know, like center lines and then, you know, sending that to the layout, whatever the top one is, however you rotate your plan, whatever the one at the top is, that one is always having that like CL on that marker there. Okay. Um, I'll be honest with you. I don't have a great answer for you right off, off the top of my head here for that one. Um, okay. And I, I have a feeling, and if any of the other staff here want to dive in on this one, I have a feeling it's something that we're going to need to look to dig into further there as far as what's, uh, what's causing, what would be causing that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so I, what you could, what I might do and what uh, I might recommend you do is talk to maybe somebody in our technical support team where you can send in a copy of that plan to us and we can kind of take a look at it and see if we can figure out what's, what you're doing there, what might be causing that to happen. Okay. And then I'm assuming um, <clears throat> uh, if I wanted to know to, in terms of getting that CL to be in the same orientation as the number um, because it rotates. So like it's read upright, but if we have like numbers read from right or what have you that, um, mm -hmm. that the number is one way and the CL symbol is another way. So is that similarly something that I don't think we have the have ability to... to control the center line icon currently uh, in either X12 or X13, right. um, and that's okay. something that we're going to need to look into for po probably in a, a future release. Because that was another thing too is like if I could just click on the CL and just like control it individually like the numbers, right. then I I could solve both of those problems. Um, yeah, I, you're you're absolutely correct. Okay. I see what you're saying there, and I I think it's just something that we haven't implemented yet. What's the, uh, how do I contact tech support? I actually have never done that before. Okay, so you can contact the technical support team by calling our main office line. That's gonna be 208-292-3400. Um, and then there's a technical support option there that will get them to you over the phone. Or okay. uh, let me pull up our website here real quick. If you go to our website, chiefarchitect.com, uh, mm. under the support panel here, we have a, um, see, I. We have a, where is it here? I normally go a slightly different route here, but you can go to, ah, right there. You can go to the online support center. And this is a place where you okay. can uh, create a, a support case where you can attach a plan file to it and those kinds of things as well. And what's the general, like, how soon does someone get back to you? Uh, uh, so, <laughs> well, we have a really good technical support team. Uh, they're pretty, they're pretty excellent about responding to cases and that kind of stuff. Our policy is you're guaranteed a response within two business days. Um, very rarely does anybody have to wait more than 24 hours. So, um, okay. if you submit a case to to us something like that, uh, if you submitted a case like right now today, I would expect mm -hmm. uh, an answer tomorrow, but you would be guaranteed an answer by Monday. Okay. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much for your help. Absolutely. Kelly, do you have next, any other questions? We do. We have a question from Charles. Hi, Charles. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Charles. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you doing? Okay, great. Good, good. I'm uh, calling from Texas with the snow. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm working on an existing house um, that's fairly new house. They have a 12 on 12 pitch. And uh, the tray ceiling in the living area, we're going to keep that, and they're going to build a bonus room right above that. But I was just looking at your version 13. Looks like it does a lot of good stuff because they want to look at the framing details, the contractor. And uh, can I do that with my version 12 as well, what you just did to show the framing detail? And then we're going to, of course, do the structural design with a laminated so beam so they can support the span. Mm -hmm. So you can you can frame your entire ceiling normally in X12, but uh, you can just hit the frame, uh, build framing, ceiling framing for that, and it will build the ceiling framing for both the framing and the tray ceiling there. Um, X13 just gives you the ability to customize the framing of your uh, tray ceilings to be different than what you have in your um, and than what you have in there currently. Uh, if you were wanting to do kind of replicate this functionality in uh, X13, uh, I have an X13 that you do in X12, it would be something where you'd end up having, having to draw, essentially drawing the, the tray ceiling manually using manual ceiling planes and holes and that kind of stuff. And you, when you draw a tray ceiling manually or draw a ceiling plane manually, you can have its own separate framing materials and framing information for that. Okay, then next. Yeah, next question is, I guess I can create a second floor from that existing house, which is, again, pitches 12 and 12. They have a massive attic space. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I'm drawing this existing plan from somebody else's 
drew by AutoCAD and I'm creating walls and everything. Should I create a second floor uh, in order to get a bonus room and then show the cross section? That is, that's and exactly And make a rendering as well. That's exactly what I do. Okay. Would do. Anytime you want to have any type of a floor platform or anything like that, even in an even if it is technically an attic space, you do want to have that second floor created or that floor above created. Because you'll notice in most uh, in all chief architect plans, there is an A floor here, an attic floor here, but there are ne we never generate any floor platforms or anything of that nature there. This is designed specifically for things like attic walls that get drawn in there to fill in gaps and uh, in like gables and things of that nature. But we don't don't generate any floor platforms there with that. So you'll want to go ahead and uh, create a second story there. We've got a really good knowledge base article on our website talking about creating a story in a half condition. Uh, and that's essentially kind of what it is that you're doing there. And that okay. involves creating a, a second floor there and going from there. I can find that on the support section. Yeah, if you go to our website, Chief Architect the video. there. And if you do a search for uh -huh. a cheap cod, uh, built and there's right here this knowledge base article building a Cape Cod or story and a half um, and there's also that's a support article and we also have a training video on there as well okay thank you very much for your help absolutely happy to help stay that's warm all. up there Kelly uh, yes, we, had, thank you. we had Amy right in she was wondering mm -hmm. if you could demonstrate how to make a floating soffit around the room that has lights in between, so it creates that soft lighting. A floating soffit around a room. So you're talking like a like a soffit that runs all along the edges here, Amy, that you then add lighting into that. Is that what you're talking about there? I believe that is what she's talking about. Yep, okay. she wrote in yes. Okay, excellent. I'm gonna do that in a new plan just so we can not mess with existing trace ceilings. And really, to be honest with you, the trait that necessarily really it could be done with a tray ceiling. It could also be done with not a tray ceiling. So if I were to do this with not a tray ceiling, I would just use simply just use soffits. Um, under my soffit tool here, I could go and grab the soffit tool, place it and drag it out like that and make it however I, and then go from there to create the soffit. And then if I wanted to put lights underneath there, under my lighting tool, I could grab my light tool. And let's say I want, I'm going to place this light right here inside here. Let's get that not bouncing on the wall here. So you'll notice it's snapping to the wall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place that, kind of put it in a position where it's underneath the soffit, but away, um, but not against the wall there. And what's happening there is it's switching between giving me a ceiling light or giving me a wall sconce. So um, what I've got there now is I've got the ceiling light there and it's placed underneath my soffit. If we look in the camera view here, we can see that. Hey, Kelly. Yeah, go ahead, Derek. Derek, Derek here. Um, yeah. She was specifically asking uh, for a rope light. And uh, basically, if you just drag that soff soffit down and make a gap between the ceiling and the soffit, and then mm -hmm. stick in a rope light in that gap. Oh, sure. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so if we open this up here and say, um, if I move this down, let's say maybe down an inch from 90 inches to 89 inches here, we'll move it down like an inch or so. And I'll click OK on that. Um, and then what we can do is we can grab our rope light tool, which is under our uh, electrical tools here and rope light. And we can place that essentially right along this edge here. Uh, or if we want to move it back a little bit so it's not um, right on the edge or we can move it back a little bit as well. And the other thing that we want to do here is we want to make sure that we have that height off finished floor set to be this, the height of our, our soffit there, which is going to be 106 and 5 eighths is what uh, I saw there earlier. So that's what, just verifying that here. Yeah, 106 and 5 eighths there. So if we look in that in our camera view there, we'll get our Tracy, our rope light kind of going along there like that. Let's see if we can kind of see it there. Let me do a, let me do a floor overview and we can see a little bit clearer. Yeah, so there it is. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. That's the process that you're going to go through there. And I think I might just have this a little short. I'm going to put that back at like 107 even. And click OK. You can kind of see the light is kind of sitting right there. You can kind of look at it here in the perspective. You can kind of see it right up there as you're going along there. I hope that answers your question, Amy, there. Our next question comes from Dahlia. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Dahlia. Hey, Lee. 
Um, yeah, my question uh, relates a little bit to the previous question regarding light trough, which is uh, some kind of a shove coming out of the wall, let's say about uh, eight feet, and it's about six inch thick, let's say, and where the ceiling is nine foot. So you have a gap and it looks like this, the upper ceiling, the nine foot ceiling is kind of floating. There is a, a light shining up from the uh, from that shelf. Sometimes it has like an L shape also. So it has a stem in mm -hmm. the face of the, of the uh, light trough. Okay. So, so with, with something like that, that's not going to be done with a tray ceiling. Uh -huh. um, and and the reason for that simply is that a tray ceiling is always going to try and be connected in chief. It's always going to have your, you know, your lower part and then some type of a ceiling going up to the upper part and putting it in there. If you're going to have some type of a gap between the bottom, between um, between the top of the ceiling and then having some type of gap there with a light shining up into it, that's where you're going to do something like either placing a soffit or placing a molding uh, using the molding line tool and then placing a soft, um, placing a light inside of that there. So if I go under my trim tools here, for example, and I go to my molding line and draw a molding line in here, let's draw one in like right here, just for an example here real quick. And we'll go ahead and open this molding up and we'll put a specific molding on there that's maybe got that L shape that you're, you're talking about there. Let's see if I can find one, maybe something like this guy just so we can kind of get an idea of what that L shape would look like there. And I don't know if this is a, uh, that X13 feature, I believe that's an X12 feature for rotating the, the view there. But if we look at that in a camera view here, we get a camera view looking at that. We got our little molding sitting right there, probably move that a little bit easier here. So let's make that a little bit bigger. Let's make that, uh, let's make that molding We'll make it big. We'll make it eight inches wide and we'll make it 15 inches high, just nice and big. So coming out there a little bit there so we can kind of see it, hopefully see it a little bit easier. I think I got a little high still. Uh, let's set that to 106. Something like that. So, there, okay, may, maybe even a little bit lower. So let's go with 10, 100 even. So much you can do, <laughs> I got it a little big here, but yeah. but, then, but then what you can do is you can use that rope light tool that I was mentioning there earlier. So under my lighting here in the rope light tool, you could draw a rope light in right along here and we'll set that to be, we'll set that height at, uh, so if we leave it at, just for example, if we leave it at the 54 inches here, there's our rope light right there. So now we just need to move it up into there. So we set that to maybe, uh, whoops, we set that to maybe, uh, we'll set that to 101. We'll click OK on that. And now we have that light shining up into the ceiling there. Okay, so if we wanted to make it um, like built in, in, like frame it, and actually the, the gap between the uh, the vertical should be like four inch, six inch, so you can stick your hand and change the light bulbs if you need sure. to. Sure, and, and again, this is this is just me kind of spitballing an example here. Um, you can certainly control that quite a bit more. You could do something like uh, using a, like a, a soffit or something like that there as well. So if I went to here, if I said got rid of this molding line and said let's put a soffit in here, mm -hmm. uh, let's say grab a soffit tool and put it right in here, and we'll set that at uh, we'll set its top of height at 100 inches. And we'll set its height to be six inches thick and floor top at 100. And then I'll stretch that all the way across like this. You could get something like that pretty easily as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Soffit's a really good, really useful tool for, for that, for those kinds of things. You, mm -hmm. you, the reason why I went with the molding line is you'd mentioned it sometimes it's a bit, it's an L shaped type of look. And the yeah. easiest way to get something that's an L shape look like that is to use a molding profile. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Kelly. Yeah, there might be a good example that you could show if uh, if you have a minute to bring up the web page and go to the samples gallery. Sure. Or the uh, yeah samples gallery, mm -hmm. and then scroll down to the Lake Point plan, 
click on the view PDF and then skip to page 20 once that opens up. Okay, page 20. Yeah, and if you kind of look at that, I don't, you don't know if you can zoom in, but that light is recessed back in. You can kind of see if you pull, pull out a little bit. Yeah, yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's exactly what Dahlia you're looking at, but that's an example. There's a video on that that shows you that process. And if you zoom out a little bit, Kelly, you can mm -hmm. see the three three D of it adjacent to that diagram. Mm -hmm. Okay, that that's good too. Yeah, that and looks there, like it's loading uh, surface. Yeah, and so Scott, in this uh, on the samples gallery here, there's this how to design videos playlist here that covers the entire process of building that house. So um, that's a really good resource for watching those different videos and, and how that process worked. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. yeah, thanks, Scott. Scott, yeah. Yep. Kelly, our next question is from Charles. Hi, Charles. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Can you hear me okay? I can. How are you? Okay. Doing good. Doing good. Just good. a quick question on the sloped uh, size of a tray ceiling. Okay. Any way to put a recessed can in there? On the sloped side of a tray ceiling, I don't believe yes. so. Um, you can put a can, you can put a can light in there. And if we look at our, I've got too many camera views up here. Give me just a moment. Let me kind of clean that up a little bit here. What I think will happen is that will, um, oh, look at that. So this is X13. So yes, yes. Okay, so X13. Yeah, uh, in X12, what you'd be looking at right now is you could place it and it will, I believe what it will do is it will place the light at the lower ceiling height at that point. Um, and what you can do is you can open that light up for specification and you can change the offset from ceiling. So if you wanted it in this place to go up or higher than the ceiling, you'd actually put it in a negative value. If you wanted mm -hmm. to go lower, you'd put it in a positive value. And then okay. that would get it, that you would get, get it up there on the ceiling there for you. Okay, so another another thing to wait for in thirteen. Yeah, um, that's unfortunately that's the that's the the only option at the moment is to to manually adjust it after you've placed it. Okay, great. Thanks for your help. Yep. Looks like that's it for today. Did you have any announcements you wanted to make, Kelly? Yeah, absolutely. So just kind of a couple of things I wanted to mention to you guys real quick. Uh, we do have uh, several uh, webinars and things of that nature coming up. Um, on our website, uh, if you go to our website here, chiefarchitect.com, let me go back a page here, a couple pages. Um, I'm on our events, trade shows, and training page, and just wanted to kind of mention a couple of things here. Coming up here in uh, beginning of March uh, through the end of April here, we have some online virtual training classes. So these are four-part classes taught over two weeks, um, and these are live classes that you can have access to uh, and kind of sit down with an instructor. I teach one of these classes. I teach the introductory class there. Um, and we have several other instructors that teach through these as well. Uh, lots of really, really good and useful information in there. So if you're looking to really uh, deepen your knowledge of Chief Architect, um, this is a really great way to get some more uh, insight and some more information on that. We also do offer on-demand training currently. You, uh, we do have uh, on-demand versions of all of these classes, these live classes that we've taught available for purchase as well. Uh, we're currently in the live uh, tray ceiling webinars here, but next week we're going to have a creating custom schedules and things of, that are coming in X13. That's going to be really useful information there as well. And then in March, we are going to step into March and we're going to spend quite a bit of our webinars here talking about stairs and stair basics and things of that nature. So get ready for that. Uh, that'll be coming up here in March as well. Um, also wanted to mention to you that uh, currently on our Chief Architect Instagram, uh, instagram.com slash Chief Architect Software, oh, we are currently at 9,905 followers and our goal or kind of our push and our hope is to get up to uh, an even 10,000 followers or higher. So if you haven't gotten a chance to follow along on our Chief Architect Instagram, I do highly recommend that. We have a lot of really useful information, insights about uh, design ideas, design contests, uh, as well as announcements about upcoming product releases, as well as things like these webinars and that kind of stuff as well. So uh, thanks again, everybody, for attending. I hope you guys had a lot of good information here. As I mentioned before at the beginning of our uh, session here, that we are recording this webinar. It is going to be emailed out to you here in the future uh, after we've gotten that all uh, kind of pared down and got, 
kind of packaged up there. So it'll get emailed out to you here along with a survey uh, so you can let us know how we're doing and what we can do to improve in the future. So thanks again for attending. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and take care. Bye.